My name is Eric Suplee. I've been an assistant baseball coach at Columbia for six years, and this is Real to Real. Major League. So Charlie Sheen's character, appropriately named Wild Thing, he throws the pitch in spring training between the two coaches, which first of all, I'm not standing back behind a catcher. I don't know what coach is. So that part's not exactly accurate. Uh, he's in the bullpen. He knocks the head off the dummy, which we have broken our dummies in the bullpen before. Uh, Brett Ganaway, former player, we actually named one of the dummies after him. Charlie Sheen actually has a pretty good delivery. There are rumors that he was throwing in the mid 80s during, during this movie, uh, which is pretty believable. Uh, he's got a good leg kick. It gets up there pretty good. So he's, he's got some athleticism in his delivery. His arm swing is much more realistic than some of the other movies. And you can tell that there's actually some effort in there in delivering the baseball. The pitching in Major League is a little skewed. Uh, Charlie Sheen, I would say, probably gets an eight. I, I think he might be the most realistic uh, pitcher. But the other guys in the movie... They look pretty terrible, so we'll balance it out a little bit and go with a four and a half. Field of Dreams. So this is a this is a huge topic in baseball, especially now we have unwritten rules, which are terrible, but they've been around obviously since the days of Field of Dreams and before then. So you have a, a young kid coming in and winking at a veteran pitcher, and especially with the antics today, I think that this would have uh, been handled a little bit differently. It probably would have just been shrugged off. But... How about a warning? Sure. Watch out you don't get killed. <laughs> the ending of Field of Dreams is probably one of the best endings of a movie I've ever seen. Um, you get all the emotions wrapped up in it. It's for a baseball player, any somebody that has really spent most of their life wrapped up in a sport especially if if your if your dad is the one that's introduced it to you this is kind of like the the holy grail of your childhood and kind of getting the chance to go back and relive that and how this all started for you so for a lot of us we went and played college baseball maybe professional this is where you develop relationships and you can all tie this back to playing catch with your dad when you're little and so it's it's as good as it gets. Is, is this heaven? It's Iowa. The overall ranking for Field of Dreams as a baseball movie, it's got to be a 10. All encompassing. The play might not be great, but for what it stands for and what it is, it's awesome. Bull Durham. Nuke Lelouch has quite an interesting delivery and I wouldn't say it's particularly very good. Uh, there's a lot of excess movement to it, but you find some guys, great example right now is Johnny Cueto, that are doing some really different things with their delivery, and it can really throw off the batter, create some deception, things like that. But as far as him actually delivering the baseball, it's not the most efficient way to do it. So Nick Lelouch, he shakes off Crash. He wants to go with the heater. In this case, it's the total wrong opportunity to announce his presence with authority. I want to bring the heater to announce my presence with authority. To announce your what? Making sure you have that good relationship with your catcher that you can actually shake shake him off and there's a mutual agreement to what's about to happen. But clearly in this in this instance it's it's just not a great situation and you yeah, hit the bowl. From a pitching perspective in Bull Durham, I would rank it as about a two or a three for love of the game. Kevin Costner's pitching form, it's pretty simple, it's clean, but you can just tell that he's not really moving too fast. There's not a lot of explosiveness. He's definitely a little bit older in this movie, so there's going to be uh, a, little bit, a little bit less athleticism from him than maybe what he did in Bull Durham, but it's still pretty pretty good. Knowing what pitch to throw or having conviction more important in a pitch is something that really comes with maturity for pitchers. And in this case, it's a it's a pain factor, but 
oftentimes a pitcher just won't feel comfortable with with what's called and something that we talk about with our guys is the the right pitch to throw is always what you have a hundred percent conviction in and in, in that case for for his character that was the pitch that the only pitch actually he could really throw so that was the best option for him on a scale of one to ten i would give for love of the game seven rookie of the year the surgery that Henry Roan Gardner received creating this monster of a pitcher, uh, I believe that if it could really happen in real life, you'd see a lot of 25 year olds in double A going out and breaking their arms tomorrow. So the idea that if your tendons just tighten up a little bit and all of a sudden you have this rocket launcher for an arm is a total fallacy. Now, there are a lot of instances where pitchers nowadays will have Tommy John surgery and come back throwing even harder than they were before after a full reconstruction of your elbow. And a lot of this is not actually tied to your arm itself. It's more so due to during the rehab process, but as far as breaking your arm and, and then throwing like that, it's just not real. Gary Busey might be the worst thrower along with Steve Nebraska in any of the movies. It's just, there's no external rotation. He's just pushing the ball in there. It's bad. Rookie of the year would probably be about a two for me, the scout. So at the time of the movie, I believe it was 1994, 105 miles an hour was completely unattainable. And to this day, it still is a little unattainable, but you, you have quite a few guys in the major leagues throwing over a hundred. So the idea that the catcher wouldn't be able to catch it you know, without his hand hurting might be a little far-fetched. Brendan Fraser's pitching form is absolutely atrocious. If you really pay attention to the side view of him throwing in Yankee Stadium, you'll actually notice that there is not a ball in his hand, which would make it impossible for him to pitch. The last pitch of the game, over 110 miles an hour, knocks over the catcher and the umpire. Definitely wouldn't happen in real life. Uh, maybe if the baseball is the size of something like a bowling ball, but you have guys hitting the ball well over 110 miles an hour at fielders and they're not getting knocked over at all. On a scale of one to 10, the only accurate thing about the scout is George Steinbrenner going wild when the Yankees win. Other than that, it's gotta be a one.